What's up? You're watching Hive Mind Unlimited, and today we're doing an episode of Keep One, One Leave, Leave One. One. You remember it from the main channel, now it's over here on Unlimited. We asked you guys for blank versus blank. You get to keep one, one is wiped off the face of the earth. These were your responses. Drake or J. Cole? Drake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a healthy debate though. Yeah, a healthy debate. Yep. Uh, J. Cole was just named the best rapper alive right now by Complex. They do that once a year. Yeah. I don't think Drake's ever won it, which is kind of crazy. I think Drake might be the best rapper alive right now. I don't, but I'll take him over J. Cole. I just mean in terms of like potency, consistency when he's actually rapping. I don't know. I on first person shooter, I'll take J. Cole over Drake, but only slightly. But overall, I mean. That song's like catered to make J. Cole shine, too. That's true. Yeah, Drake's discography, I, I, there's much more for me there than J. Cole's. I think J. Cole's a fantastic rapper, not taking anything away from him, but it's Drake. Now, if you threw Meek Mill into this mix, I would, I would take Drake, still. <laughs> yeah, I would as well. Yeah. Ooh, Hive Mind Feud or Hive Mind Jeopardy? Which stolen valor do we like more? <laughs> Yeah, these are our games that we came up with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if it came down to host, I'll take Feud. We host both of them. Well, I'm saying if there were another host in another universe or something of like an original show. Right. Because I hate Ken Jennings sniveling ass. Yeah, you don't like Ken Jennings. Oh, I would choke him. <laughs> I hate Mormons. I do. I hate them. I think Jeopardy just has a more diversity of questions and that makes it more exciting to play for me. But I do love Feud's structure. Yeah, one on one, I love Jeopardy more, mm -hmm. but I love having a great guest for Feud. That's true. And That's I true. love having my hands in on pre production, which we get to do a little more with Feud. But I think overall, just like as a game, I love Jeopardy. It's like one of the greatest games ever invented. Yeah, it's the most fun to play. I love having the buzzers. I love buzz losing buzz. points when you get it wrong. It's right. like, it's got a whole ebb and flow to it. Yeah, let us know as a Hive Mind fan which one you like more. I'll take Jeopardy. If I really had to, I'll take Jeopardy. Thank you. Lil Yachty rap or Lil Yachty psych rock? I mean, there's definitely more Lil Yachty rap music out there. And I think I love more songs. I don't know. He's really good at both, though. I, I think that album was was pretty good. And his other forays, like, I know it's not psych rock, but I love the Faye Webster song that he did. I don't know. I think he's, he's good at both, but I'll take Lil Yachty rap. I think he's a great rapper. I will, too, especially, like, the current arc. Yeah. Like, he's really rapping. I will say, though, he's doing the same flow on all those old, like, soul beat songs. And it's starting to feel a little bit, like, early in Yachty's career where he's just trying to prove that he can rap at the expense of making a fun song. Like, a year ago, when he was doing, like, Strike yeah. and Poland, and he's kind of, like, working in that warbly voice. I kind of want to see him mesh the two styles. I want to see him yeah. go lyrical with the warbly melodic hook and kind of like a Kevin Parker I, there guitar. There needs solo. to be a fusion, yeah, <laughs> of all of these things. Yeah. <laughs> but for now, I think Lil Yachty as a rapper has more to stand on than Lil Yachty as a psych rock musician. And I'll take him as a friend. Right. Get us on the podcast, Yachty. Yeah, and come on Hive Mind. You're welcome on Hive Mind anytime, Lil Yachty, if you're watching this. I know you watch our friend Therapy Gecko. Mm -hmm. So maybe you'll find your way to us. I want to hang out in that jungle gym couch he has. He has such a cool <laughs> spot for <laughs> yeah. his podcast. Yeah. And half the time they're not even talking into the mics. Uh, it's, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Child rap versus or celebrity cameos. So this being like on a rap album yeah. or on an album of any genre, I guess. The children of the rapper doing a little rap verse. Yeah. A la Adonis or Miss Miss Westy. Mm -hmm. Versus celebrity cameos a la Jim Carrey on Dawn FM. Morgan Freeman. Or Jerry Seinfeld on the Wall A mixtape. Thank you yeah. for that one, that reminder. <laughs> yeah. The child rap versus I can, oh God, if they didn't exist, the world would be a better place. I do wish that celebrity cameos were more effective, more yeah. like artfully chosen. I do think the Jim Carrey thing went over well. That was cool. I do. But a lot of the time it feels like they were like, oh, it'd be cool if I had them there. But what are they really there for? It doesn't feel as like direct and yeah. intentional as it should. And the child rap versus it just feels like, I don't know. Of course, you love your kid, but yeah, it feels don't need like your a, kid to perform with you. Feels like a savvy way to like build your kid's fortune. It's like when you add your two-year-old as an executive producer or something. It's like, oh, this is gonna like funnel them money in some sort of savvy way, which is like a great sentiment. But as a music listener, I don't. 
Love it. Yeah, I mean, it's nice that Blue Ivy won a Grammy or whatever. But yeah. like, <laughs> I, you know, I, whatever. It's yeah. just, you're ruining your kid's life too. Like, let them do their own thing. Mm-hmm. Like, let them decide what to make and do. Yeah. Instead of already everybody knows them by the age of seven. Right. You know. Agreed. Celebrity cameos. Yeah, celeb cameos. Ben Shapiro's verse or The Rock's verse? Oh, Shapiro walks here. <laughs> I hate to, Actually, I do kind of hate to say it, but it it's good. What are you, Nicki Minaj? Yes. <laughs> I am. I'm sorry. I'm, I hate that you found out this way. <laughs> I really do. Oh, I don't know. I, I Ben Shapiro's verse is just stupid. It's not... I can't listen to Ben Shapiro go, This is a yarmulke, homie, no cap. <laughs> I can. And The Rock's verse was, a, I don't know, it's funny and seems more harmless. Yeah, and The Rock's more charismatic. I was kind of joking about Ben Shapiro. I'd love to see this fight, though. I mean, yeah, I'll take The Rock, The Rock's verse and The Rock over Ben Shapiro any day of the week. Dog grooming or selling baseball cards? Our parents' businesses pitted against each other. <laughs> yeah, well, our father's businesses. Correct. My mom grooms dogs, too. I know, but my mom doesn't sell baseball cards or groom dogs. My mom is an event planner and a cook. And? Sweet angel. Yes, exactly. Sent from above. Exactly. And I would die without her. Selling baseball cards is cooler than grooming dogs. It's not. It is cooler. Dogs like a job. are, what's better to hang out with? A bunch of cards with <laughs> pictures of men on them or little cute puppies? <laughs> Go ahead, chat. Let us know. I'll tell you which one smells better. <laughs> After a bath, a lavender spritzed poodle licking your face. Give me a break. That's better than rubbing a Wade Boggs on your chest. <laughs> I'm just saying. Which your dad does. <laughs> yeah, he does. But <laughs> not just Boggs. <laughs> Mantles. Or you know, Jorge Posada. Uh, but, but I'm saying if you met somebody in a bar. Yep. And you're like, ah, oh, what do your parents do? And the guy says, my dad sells baseball cards. You're right. Or my dad grooms dogs. Mm-hmm. The baseball card thing is a cooler conversation. I don't think so. It is. I've used the dog grooming as a gateway to conversation many times. A great success. For example, you walk into a dog-friendly bar and someone's got a dog. You walk up to it. Who's a little doggy? And you start up conversation with the person. You say, oh, my parents are dog groomers. That's why I have a special interest in this dog. Okay. Or you walk into a bar and two men are inspecting a PSA 9.5 near mint 1952 Mickey Mantle. Does that happen to you? A lot. And I, I walk in and I go, oh, uh, let me check that out. <laughs> yeah, that's probably going for, I mean, it might be 30K. I don't know how much it goes for right now, currently. I don't mm-hmm. know the market right now, but yeah. I could call Kevin. But uh, conversation started right yeah. there. New friends. We seem diametrically opposed here. But it is keep one, leave one. We have to choose to keep one and leave one. I will keep the dog grooming. I'll keep the dog grooming as well because I, I don't want to live in a world with just smelly dogs everywhere. Thank you. Drunk Sig or 3 a.m. sip of water? I mean, these go hand in hand. The reason you need that water so bad at 3 a.m. is because you had a couple drunk hoons. Yeah. <laughs> the Drunk Sig feels better than the 3 a.m. sip of water. Oh, I don't know. I had a 3 a.m. sip of water from a water bottle that might have been eight months old on the side of my bed the other day, and it tasted like plastic and mold, and it hit so good. The feeling of really cool quenching your thirst is so good. That's true. I think for me, the 3 a.m. sip of water is just followed by more sips of water throughout the day than yours is. Yeah. I had the feeling working out the other day when I actually drank Gatorade, like in the right time when you were really sweating, I was like, holy smokes, this stuff does its job. (laughs) It's like, it makes you feel hot. Yeah. This is a thirst quencher. (laughs) It's it's doing its job. You can like feel it in your shoulders. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I'm going with sip of water here because I'd like a cig if I'm drunk, if I'm high, if I'm asleep. I like like it whenever. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'll go with the drunk cig because that feeling, it's just a rush. I feel like I am drunk more than I am getting my thirst quenched. So the quenching of the thirst is like a rarity. I think you're drunk more than you're sober. Next. Hopefully. (laughs) The Drunken Clam or Moe's Tavern. The Clam. Yeah, that show's like about drinking. Homer's like an implied alcoholic. Right. But in Family Guy, they are like hanging at the clam. Yeah, they go to, I mean, the clam, it seems like a... Like a utopia, like a paradise. Yeah, a Shangri-La. Like to me, that is kind of like three days in the desert, no water. And then you finally find a fresh drinking hole, Mm. a water hole. That's like 
sweet relief is the clam. I love a drunken clam too. Oh yeah, when you're drunk and you eat clams. Yeah. yeah. Or eat box. Uh, yeah, I'll go. We'll go with the clam. Yeah, we're going clam. All the music you've ever heard, or all the music you've yet to hear. Oh, all the music I've ever heard. Easy. I'm like at that point in my life. Yeah, we're getting to the age where a lot of people that we grew up with, they just listen to what they like, and yeah. they don't try to find new stuff. This one's tough for me though, because I just discovering music is, is it like great? it's so. If it, it like. St- stopped and started today, it would be very difficult for me because I mean, there's so many albums that I love. There's so many artists that I love. Mm -hmm. I'd never be able to listen to anything they've made so far. And especially for artists that have passed away, it's like, there's never going to be a new Elliott Smith song. Right. That hurts for me to not be able to just go back and listen to Elliott Smith or Nirvana. Mm -hmm. But there's so much great music that I've yet to hear. And if I wasn't able to hear any of it, I I would feel like I was in a straitjacket. Yeah. I mean, that feels like the more like zest for life answer. Uh huh. If it really came down to it. Some zesty ass. Yeah. I'll take what I, I'll take what I've heard <laughs> and just like deal with, I'll like mow the lawn to a Hall and Oates record and be like, <laughs> I know I'm going to love it. It's fine. Yeah. I guess that's true. I think if it really came down to it and I was asked this question by some sort of genie or God, Mm -hmm. I would have to pick all the music I've ever heard. And think about this. You might have fun discovering music, but as you listen to it one time, you can never go back to it. Oh, it's like an ongoing. Uh, (laughs) You only hear one song, every song once. You're like, that was a banger. And then it's gone. (laughs) Oh, never mind then. Yeah. When you walk around in public during those times... (laughs) Is it like you, like everything's silent? Is it silent when the Black Eyed Peas, I've Got a Feeling, plays from a bar? It's just a cover of you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a different movie. Yeah. Whatever we just came up with is a different movie. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with all the music I've ever heard. Me too. Sour or Guts? <clears throat> These are Olivia Rodrigo albums if you're watching this in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I go Sour. Guts is the new one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I do think that the songwriting has elevated on Guts. Agreed. But I think there's more like Taylor Swift-isms on Guts mm-hmm. that kind of turn me away from coming back to it as much yeah. as I... I think Sour is like a, a really good time capsule. Like it just... It feels more like someone finding their sound and stumbling into a great album and Guts feels like, how do I follow that up? And there are more deliberate choices on Guts and that works against it a little bit as just like a body of work. I'll go sour. Yes. Mainstream music or underground music? This is cheese whiz. I think if you go percentage wise, there's way more bad underground music than there is bad mainstream music. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. It yeah, might be like know. a one for one exact compare because there's so much bad pop music out there. There's so much music in general and there's really like 500 good songs. There's like 50,000 good songs. Uh, not that I've heard. I'm going to go underground music. Where's the line? Right. That's what I want to know is like what is considered underground what is considered mainstream. I feel like I say underground here because I lean so old and I think so much old stuff falls under the umbrella of underground music just because it's obviously not mainstream. Even if it like had its day or whatever, it was like a niche in its day and it's like garnered respect to a point now where it just lives and it would have to live in the underground. You're not going to call Chet Baker mainstream music despite if he was really big. But I think that the difference there is how music was distributed back in the day. You really only saw what was kind of mainstream because How are you finding music otherwise? Going to clubs, I guess. (laughs) Well, yeah, but I'm I'm just saying the music would get to people in a way that was more of the machine than Mm -hmm. it is nowadays. You can really find something that somebody just uploaded on the internet and then it can garner a huge fan base eventually. It just depends where you draw the line. I think a lot of music that I've loved in my life has been underground when I first found it. Not like all of it, but I'm saying that has been a thing that I love doing is finding something underappreciated. And then I do get a satisfaction when it becomes something that a lot of people like. Mm -hmm. But I also love pop music and pop culture. And so there's a lot of mainstream music that I like. It just depends on where you draw the line. (laughs) There's no answer here. You got to choose one. Mainstream music. Got it. Oh, perfect. Finally, something I can talk about. (laughs) Edging or gooning? Can you define both of these for me? I can't. Edging is... uh, Getting close to blasting. Climax control. Yeah, getting real close to blasting and then abstaining. Right. Gooning is kind of like slapping it around for hours. (laughs) 
like playing with it in a way. I don't know. For some reason, I think of it as like jacking off like a werewolf. Like you're just kind of like, <laughs> ah! yeah, it's like an insane yeah. session. Yeah, you're like, whoa, whoa. like yeah, yeah, a lot of emoting going on. The Goon Cave Reddit is a good place. That doesn't sound like a good place. Yeah, people post pictures of their setups and a lot of uh, master gooners. And it's like their phone, a TV screen, a computer monitor, and they'll play like eight different porns and then like LeBron highlights. And it's like an <laughs> overstimulation kind of like max out. That's like goon maxing. Right. And edging is like, oh, and then you do that a few times. Yeah. Uh, as a term, I'll take edging. Gooning is just feels inappropriate. I don't know. I feel like there's no, yeah. I don't, well, I would never use that. You can extrapolate edging to like social situations and things. It just feels more appropriate. It feels more part of the lexicon of like, <laughs> I'm like all, old language. Yeah. Gooning is like a, just a thing. And, and in like five months, people are going to be like, you're, you're still saying gooning? I also hate that gooning stole goon. Goon's like a fun word. Oh, he's acting like a goon. Oh, uh, he's a fucking goon. Yeah. Or like I'm, I pull up with my goons. Yeah, now yeah. it's like, now it's like you pull up with your goons. That's like a group of guys you jerk off with. That's messed up. I don't want yeah. a group of what friends a, like that. A I jerking like, crew? I like doing that alone. Jerking crew meant something else back in the day. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. We'll take edging. Blonde or blonde on blonde? This is a Frank Ocean versus Bob Dylan record. I'll shock a lot of people here. You're going to take blonde? Yeah. Is it because Frank Ocean only has two albums? That plays a part in it, but also Blonde on Blonde is like, a, it's a great Dylan album, but I don't think it cracks like my top four. It does for me, but there are a lot of great Bob Dylan albums. And if that one didn't exist, there's still so much great Bob yeah. Dylan music out there. And if Blonde didn't exist, Frank Ocean wouldn't have dropped an album in 12 years. Yeah, and I wouldn't know how to be emotionally vulnerable. So yeah, Blonde. Mm -hmm. Billy Joel or Elton John? Classic straight versus gay battle here. <laughs> oh man, that really puts me in a corner. I gotta pick straight. Whoa, why do you pick that one, Riley? Well, I just picked Billy Joel. Yeah. And I know that that's not the, the popular answer because Elton John is considered to be a more creative artist. And I don't mean creative like, <laughs> you know. Billy Joel's kind of like a like a cabaret singer or something, <laughs> like a lounge singer. But at the same time, I just love his music. Yeah. For nostalgic purposes. I don't necessarily love either of these artists. Um, I guess I go Elton John, but it's it's closer than I think you think it is. Yeah. I do like Billy Joel, especially the 70s stuff. I Elton mean, the 80s Joel is not good. I, I will admit right. that. I concede that. But there's some there's some stinker Elton John records, too. I'm sure there are. Yeah. But, I mean, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road is kind of like considered a classic. I mean, The Stranger's considered a classic, too. The Lion King. Are you saying that as if it's good or bad to you? Soundtrack, great. Okay. Kendrick Lamar or Elliot Smith? Classic matchup of gay versus straight. Sorry. <laughs> nope. Uh, For the fan bases. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Both artists from Compton here. Who's the king of Compton, Riley? Nope. Oh, uh, <laughs> Elliot Smith is from Omaha, Nebraska. Who's the king of Compton? <laughs> this is like... It's like even for me. Because I think they both have like three amazing albums. Elliot Smith might have four. Kendrick's discography is is done. He's done releasing albums. I'll probably pick Kendrick Lamar. But currently, I go Elliot Smith. Fair just play. As a, as a discography. Miles Garrett versus Eden Burke. Eden Burke is your girlfriend. Correct. And Miles Garrett is your hero. <laughs> yes. Here's what I will say. Eden, in a lot of ways, was also my hero. But... Did she have 16 sacks this season? She had four and a half. Yeah. She plays interior, though. Well, it's a lot different. She's I, a run stopper. I know, but She's still. She's a run stopper. Yeah, but it matters in this case. It does, but it seems like an overinflated stat of importance. And in terms of little kisses, Miles <laughs> has zero. Right. And just this year, Eden's given me at least 60. <laughs> and the record's 105, so. The record's 105. Yeah. For season of little kisses, yeah. I, for some reason, I doubt that. But I have received zero little kisses from either of these people. I have been sacked by one of them once. <laughs> <laughs> Blindside, too. It was a dirty yeah, it was, hit. Yeah, it was a dirty hit. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with my good friend, Eden Burke. I'll go with Miles Garrett. Blur or Oasis? Oasis. Couldn't name a Blur song. Test me. Woohoo! That's song two by Blur. You know that song. I know it, but I couldn't have named it, and I I won't. 
Well, Brit Pop Giants here, and <laughs> Blur has a great album called Park Life. I will take Oasis, but I think it's close. I mean, Blur is Damon Albarn, and that's Gorillaz. He's a great songwriter. I think they have great albums. It's just Oasis has, like, classic songs that I could sing off the top of my head right now. Mm -hmm. And will remember forever, will always return to. Blur is like phases. Like sometimes yeah. I'll just go listen to a Blur album, but I'll take Oasis. I'll take Eden. Hmm. Playboy Cardi or the Beatles? Oddly enough, I've had two great acid trips with records by each of these respected artists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's kind of a unique position to be in. Most Playboy Cardi fans, you just don't associate his music with like psychedelia. Really? I mean, I don't know. Die Lit's a very psychedelic record. Yeah. And I think there are psychedelic elements to a lot of the singles that Cardi's been dropping. That's true. It's a joke question, obviously. Playboy Cardi is like, you know, he doesn't have a lot of music under his belt. Mm -hmm. The Beatles are like the best band ever to a lot of people. I think they've got some fantastic albums. And I think that even their albums that are not my favorite, I have to kind of like concede. They're yeah. really well made, <laughs> well written, well produced albums. So it is the Beatles. Yeah. But Cardi's more exciting right now, I will say. like For sure. Most you know, of the Beatles are dead. Yeah, most yeah. of the Beatles are dead. Most of the Beatles fans are dead. The Beatles shows, definitely not as lit. Yeah, no. <laughs> but in a non-sarcastic way, there is no Playboy Cardi without Paul McCartney. Is he his dad or something? <laughs> what? Is he his dad or That's something? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like the lineage of music isn't quite the same without Paul McCartney. And, and there, yes, he's his dad. And there is no Aiden Ross without Dick Van Dyke. Yes. <laughs> if you think about it. Correct. Right. Yeah. The Miami Dolphins or Vampire Weekend? Dan Marino played in one of these bands, so I'll take the Dolphins. I'll take Vampire Weekend. Fuck you. I have been... Fuck you, man. I have Seriously, been fuck you. listening to their first answer. three records Ugh. so much recently. Zero misses. Watch a Larry Zonka highlight, you nerd. Zero misses on the first vamp three Vampire Weekend albums. You're right. I agree. Yeah. The Dolphins even went Blake's, undefeated. Even Blake's got a new face on the first record. It is the worst song on that record, but it's still like a 7 out of 10, you know? Blake's got a new face. Blake got a new Ricky Williams? I, I don't know. I don't really care. God. Vampire Weekend made I Stand Corrected, Diplomat's Son, I, I Think You're a Contra, Hannah Hunt. I'm not disagreeing with you. I love the band. But the Dolphins White are... White Sky. Come on. I mean, I don't know. Great uniforms, too. Come on. They do have great uniforms, but... Honestly, Don Shula! Right now... The winningest coach of all time. No, totally. But I'm saying the Miami Dolphins right now... I love Mike McDaniel. Damn I right think you he's, do. he's great. And I think Tyreek Hill is a very talented, Bad although guy, controversial, Bad yeah, guy. wide receiver. Not but controversial. You know. Yeah, just... Yeah, yeah. Seems like a bad guy. Bradley Chubb. Good guy. But, yeah, good guy. And I hope he's healing up well. Yeah, me too. Miami <laughs> Dolphins. The lead singer of Vampire Weekend is also has a child with Rashida Jones. Boo. All right, Vampire Weekend for me. Photographs or paintings? Paintings. Photographs. <laughs> practically, what are you doing? What do you mean practically? I don't need either one. Oh, you guys look so cute. One second. Yeah, but I don't need either one. Neither one, like, is necessary. You, you don't need pictures? Who needs it? What? You're not going to have memories someday. Memories. They could paint me a nice, paint me a picture of a duck smoking a cigarette. Let's try and make a photograph do that. You know how hard it is to put a cigarette in a duck? It's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Legally speaking, it's impossible in most states. Dumb law. Yeah, outdated. Very <laughs> stupid. Duck with a dart. I mean, that's a good idea. But yeah. I do think you could get a picture to happen. You might have to fly to a different country to make it happen. But if we didn't have photographs, the world would be all fucked up. We had paintings way longer than we had photographs, and we were just all right. Exactly. We were just all right. And yeah. now we're great. And we have Instagram. Oh, well, that's true. Like looking at ass and stuff. <laughs> it would suck if it was all painted. They have to be really good. <laughs> I'll what, take paintings, though. There's what, something about it just more magical. What would the thumbnails for our videos be? A nice painting. We'd hire a guy, <laughs> like a sketch artist. They'd be like caricatures, and my nose would be long, and you'd be playing it like a clarinet or something. Battle of the Bad Bands. AJR or Falling in Reverse? AJR. And I don't really have an argument, but <laughs> they might have a song that's like more palatable for me. Yeah, there's not really many redeeming qualities about either of them. I don't need to hear any of their music ever again. One of them wipes Ronnie Radke off the face of the earth. Correct. Which is a good thing. Right. And so I'll pick AJR because they don't seem like bad people. No. They seem like corny people, mm -hmm. but I don't wish ill will upon them. Thank you. It's not their fault that their music got popular. Yeah. You know, it's just 
their music sucks dick and ass and butt. Whatever. They're just cornballs who make bad, stupid music. And we got like a, a double. So okay. we got duo versus duo. Prince and BLP Kosher or Marvin Gaye and Destroy Lonely. Marvin Gaye and Destroy Lonely. It's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah. Marvin and Lone. Like, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, which is obviously, okay, Prince versus Marvin Gaye. I'll take Marvin Gaye. It's close, obviously. Yeah. But uh, I prefer Marvin Gaye's music to Prince's music. And BLP Kosher versus Destroy Lonely, that's even closer. But currently, I'll take Destroy Lonely. Yes. I think it's more stylish. BLP Kosher is great, but has some terrible songs. Mm -hmm. And Destroy Lonely, the worst his song can be is boring. I'm with you. Broadway music or Disney music? Elton John, baby. I'll take Disney music. What am I going to spin some Andrew Lloyd Webber? Get the hell out of here. I'll play the Nemo soundtrack all day. Kevin Gates was on that originally. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I got two fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever. I don't know. Pick one, asshole. Broadway music. What the fuck? Why would you say that? Lame is. Says she a thespian girl. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of good Broadway music. Disney music is fine too, but there's more annoying Disney. Actually, no, they're both annoying. Can you feel... The love tonight. Let's get down to business. Yeah, I mean, actually, I'm going to go Disney music. I switched it up because Phil Collins, Tarzan as Slaps. well. Slaps. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yep. That was another classic episode of Keep One, Leave One. If you've got topics for this, we took them from our Patreon. Join our Patreon and support. Thank you. Also, subscribe to Hive Mind Unlimited. We're going to start uploading on here more often. Anything you'd like to say to anybody out there? Uh, just... Don't, don't do it. What? Don't do it. Also, we got this merch available on Cope's website. Look at this. Look at that. It's got a fish on it. It's available on copes.shop slash hivemind. There's a restock. It's going to sell out. Go buy one right now. Thank you so much for watching. This is about Hive Mind Unlimited. I love you. Chiefs or 49ers? I just don't like the 49ers. I don't like them. They feel like they represent something terrible and white. Exactly. It's but a they white don't. Thing. Yeah, not they don't, really, really. I guess. They do have the only white running back, and he's the best, which is annoying. That is kind of annoying, yeah, <laughs> when yeah. trying to be an ally. <laughs> it's tough. It's just not my favorite thing. I don't know why they feel like that, though. They I, feel right. like the Celtics of the NFL or something. Totally. They feel like that. But the Chiefs are just so boring, like, every yeah. year. Ugh. Yeah, they asked Mahomes, like, he's kind of beginning his villain arc officially because he's just ruining every fan's favorite team's year. Yeah, he's like, I like being the villain. I like being, I can't do a Kermit. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I like being the villain. Yeah, that's what he sounds like. I'm Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> and he's like, he's tubby and he's rushing on everybody. It's crazy. I, I do love Andy Reid. I guess. Um, I'll take the Chiefs. I don't. I, I guess I kind of like the Chiefs more than the 49ers. I don't know why, though. I'll take the Niners. Uh, whatever. Whatever.